General Paramasiva Prabhakar Kumaramangalam, the 1st of July 1913 to the 13th of March 2000, was the seventh chief of the Army Staff (COAS) of the Indian Army from 1967 to 1970. He was among the last of the king's commissioned Indian officers trained in England in the Indian Army, and the last KCIO Indian Army chief. Early life and education P. P. Kumaramangalam was born to the former Chief Minister of Madras Presidency, P. Subarayan in the Zamindari family of Kumaramangalam in Tamil Nadu. He had his secondary education at Eton College and was commissioned from the Royal Military Academy Woolwich as a second lieutenant on the unattached list for the Indian Army on 31 August 1933. He was appointed to the British Indian Army on 12 November 1934. Military life World War II During World War II, he was awarded the Distinguished Service Order (DSO) as a temporary major for action in Libya on the 27th of May 1942 at Point 171, south of Bir Hakim, commanding the 7th Field Battery, 2nd Field Regiment, Indian Artillery. The citation recommending Kumaramangalam for a Distinguished Service Order runs as follows: The 4th of June 1942, Captain Tai. Major P A R A M A S I V A Prabhakar K U M A R A M A N G A L A M E A 1282 Second Indian Field Regiment Third Indian Motor Brigade for great courage and devotion to duty on the 27th of May 1942 during the action which took place three miles S E of Bir H A C H E I M Major Kumaramangalam showed great bravery in controlling the fire of his battery under heavy enemy fire. He continually encouraged the gun detachments, and by his cool demeanor in the face of machine gun and anti-tank fire from enemy tanks undoubtedly inspired his men with the confidence with which they withstood the final tank attack. When one of his troops was overrun and captured, he acquired an armored car left at the position and tried to drive the Italian tanks away which were encircling it. Subsequently he lead sick a patrol back to the position and recovered three guns. He was taken prisoner of war POW, by the Italians later in 1942 and held in a POW camp in Italy. With the Italian armistice in September 1943 he escaped on 19 November, however he was captured again in January 1944 and imprisoned, this time in Germany, where he was transferred to Stalag Luft III a high security camp for POWs. At the end of the war in 1945, he returned to India. Topic: Post-war. On the 18th of April 1946, Kumaramangalam was appointed a member of the Order of the British Empire (MBE). He became an acting brigadier in 1948, with the substantive rank of lieutenant colonel, and was promoted to the substantive rank of colonel on the 2nd of February 1951. As a brigadier, he was appointed to command a paratroop brigade on 14 February 1955, and was given command of an infantry division on 9 September 1956. With the acting rank of Major General, Kumaramangalam was promoted to substantive Major General on 1 August 1958, and appointed the Commandant of the Defence Services Staff College on 25 February 1959. He was appointed Adjutant General on 5 October 1959, with the acting rank of Lieutenant General. Promoted Lieutenant General on 8 May 1961, he took over as General Officer Commanding, Eastern Command on 1 May 1963, with appointment as GOC in C, Eastern Command on 4 April 1964. On 16 November 1964 he was appointed Deputy Chief of the Army Staff, followed by appointment as Vice Chief of the Army Staff on 15 January 1965. General Kumaramangalam took over as the Chief of the Army Staff on 8 June 1966, the first Indian gunner officer and paratrooper to reach this coveted appointment. The tenure of General Kumaramangalam as Chief of the Army Staff was marked by an unpublicized but exhaustive reorganization of the service, upgradation of weapons, training and tactics based on the lessons learned from the 1965 war. 
He served in the Indian Army with distinction for 36 years until his retirement on 7 June 1969. He received the Padma Vibhushan in 1970. Topic. Views on America General Kumaramangalam trained at the Artillery School in Fort Sill, Oklahoma. From his letters it is evident he was not very impressed with the Americans. He saw them as suffering from an aggressive inferiority complex and cautioned a newly independent India against coming under American influence. The following is an excerpt from a letter written by him to C. Rajagopalachari in 1947. This country is not one that I will ever get fond of. I have not got a very high opinion of them. The people that I have to deal with are very kind, hospitable and have been very good to the two of us. But somehow I feel there is a trace of artificiality in that and also it is the result of trying to impress one. They I think are very jealous of the old world and its background and culture and this results in an aggressive inferiority complex. As for their state of morality, there is none. People seem to delight in trying to outwit each other by any means, mainly crooked. The politicians are racketeers and big business has a tight grip on everything in the country. The small country trader and the farmer I think have their hands securely tied by the big men. I do hope that our country proceeds with caution and doesn't get entirely under the influence of the states. Other interests. He was also a polo player, horseman, show jumper, and cricketer. He was a member of the Marylebone Cricket Club, a fellow of the Royal Horticultural Society, and president of Indian Polo Association and Equestrian Federation of India. On retirement as Army Chief, he was elected president of the World Wildlife Fund, India, WWF India during its formative stages. Death. He died following a heart attack on the 13th of March 2000. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Awards and decorations. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Dates of rank. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> See also. Chief of Army Staff of the Indian Army equals equals notes